The pectoralis major is the largest and most visible muscle that makes up your chest, and it's composed of two distinct muscle heads. An upper portion, known as the clavicular head, also often referred to as the upper chest, and a lower portion known as the sternocostal head, which is often referred to as the mid and lower chest. And the amount of muscle that you can add to these portions of your chest is highly dependent on your genetics, the types of exercises you're doing, and how you're performing those exercises. And while some men have no problem building bigger pecs, others struggle to gain any kind of ground when it comes to building muscle on their chest, giving them a flat chested appearance. I myself, unfortunately, have always fallen into the latter category, and my chest has always been a lagging muscle group, especially the upper portion. But even if you don't have optimal genetics for massive pecs, you can still build up all the parts of your chest, including the upper portion, to the best of your genetic potential, just by performing the right exercises, many of which most men ignore entirely when training their chest. So let's start with one of the most overlooked exercises for the upper chest, the reverse grip bench press. The typical go-to exercise for building up the chest is the regular bench press. However, research shows that by taking a reverse grip, you'll actually increase muscle activation of the clavicular head, which is that upper portion of the chest, by over 30%. Meanwhile, performing an incline bench press only increases your upper chest activity by about 5-10% to 10 when compared to the regular bench press. So the reverse grip bench press is truly a great exercise if you have trouble with developing your upper chest. So to perform the reverse grip bench press, you'll first want to lay down on a flat bench and grip the bar with a supinated or reverse grip so your palms will be facing you rather than turned away from you like in a regular bench press. Your hand should also be about shoulder width apart or a little wider, and to be safe, you want to keep your thumbs around the bar the whole time. From there, retract your shoulders, unrack the bar, and bring it directly over the line of your shoulders. Then you're going to lower it down in an arc-like angle towards the bottom of your lower chest. Throughout the entire exercise, you don't want to let your elbows flare out, and instead, they should be nice and tight to your ribs. Once the barbell comes down to your chest, you're going to press it back up in a slight arc-like motion until it's back at the original starting position. Keep in mind, when you get to the top, you still want to maintain a very slight bend in your arms rather than locking your elbows out because locking out will put a lot of unnecessary pressure on your joints. Now, remember, when doing this exercise, you won't be able to use as much weight as you normally could with the regular bench press, so you will have to go lighter. There is nothing wrong with that. Next, we have the cross-body incline chest press. This exercise usually uses the incline hammer strength machine, but if you don't have access to this piece of equipment, you can also set up a bench next to a cable crossover to mimic a similar motion. Also, even if you've already used the hammer strength chest press machine to do this exercise, I highly recommend you try it with cables too because it gives you an incredible pump in your upper chest and it keeps constant tension throughout the entire movement. So to perform this exercise with the cables, you'll first position a bench next to a cable crossover machine and adjust the pulley so that your hand ends up being about even with your chest. Then instead of sitting straight back, you're going to turn to one side and using the arm on that same side that you turn towards, you're going to hold the D handle with an overhand grip. Keep in mind that you're not going to be completely turned all the way out to your side at a 90 degree angle. You're going to be turned out a little less than that at about a 60 to 70 degree angle. Then you're going to press the weight across your body until your arm is almost fully extended. Then really squeeze at the top for a second or two before lowering the weight back towards your chest and repeating for reps. Another great exercise that many people don't even know about is the standing Sven press. Now this is an exercise that I would say for the end of your workout after you've already completed your heavy pressing movements. Start by standing straight up with your chest out, your shoulders back, and your feet about shoulder width apart. Then you're going to take a pair of plate weights and press them against each other. You should be holding them in between your palms and the weight should be about at your chest or shoulder level. Your fingers should be open and pointing straight ahead and you want to make sure that you're really squeezing the plates nice and tight together throughout the entire movement to incorporate more horizontal adduction, which is the main function of your chest. While squeezing the plates, you're going to extend your arms straight out in front of you until they're almost fully locked out. Then you're going to bring the plates back in toward your chest and repeat for reps. 
Another awesome exercise that many people forget to include in their routine is the hex press. Specifically for the upper chest, we're gonna go for the incline hex press. Not only will the incline hex press help hit your upper chest in a unique way, but it'll also help you develop the inner portion of your chest, which will help you get a nicer outline. To begin, you'll grab two dumbbells and take a seat on an incline bench with the dumbbells resting on your knees. Then as you lay back, kick your legs up to help get the dumbbells up over your chest. Instead of turning your hands out as you would with a regular dumbbell press, you'll want to keep them in that neutral position and bring them together so that they're touching. Then lower the dumbbells down towards your chest while squeezing them really tight together and keeping your elbows close to your sides. Once the dumbbells meet your chest, press back up until your arms are almost fully locked out and then lower back down and repeat for reps. The next exercise that's very effective for the upper chest is the incline fly. But instead of doing it with dumbbells, we're gonna use cables to keep constant tension on the chest throughout the entire movement. And we'll also be performing it laying down on an incline bench rather than standing upright. The line of resistance created with the cables on an incline allows you to hit the upper chest much more efficiently. So to begin, you'll set up a bench at an incline angle in between two cables that are set at the bottom of a cable crossover machine. Once you get to a heavier weight load, you're gonna have trouble grabbing the cables from a seated position. So stand up, grab one cable, bring it in close to your chest, then go over to the other cable, grab it, and take a seat on the bench. Next, you'll lay back and press both arms straight up over the line of your chest. Then lower the cables down and out to your sides in a circular arc-like motion until the cables are about even with your shoulders. While doing this, make sure that you're keeping your elbows slightly bent, and I found that I get better chest activation when I keep my hands open on the way down. So you can try that, but feel free to try keeping your hands closed as well. Once your hands are about even with your shoulders, you'll want to bring the cables back up and together in that same arc-like motion until the handles touch. Hold it there and squeeze for a second or two before bringing the cables back down and repeating for reps. Next, we have a fly variation that's actually one of my favorite upper chest exercises to do with cables. This exercise is performed on the floor using one side at a time. Here you would lower the cable to the very bottom of the cable cross, lay down on your back, and essentially perform a fly on one side. So same cues as before, we wanna have one arm open with a slight bend in the elbow, and you wanna bring the cable up towards the center line of your chest in an arc-like path. If you follow these cues, it should look like you're hugging a tree with one arm. Now, unlike a regular fly, once you bring the cable over the center of your chest, you're not quite done yet. The difference is at the end of each rep, you'll really want to reach across your chest and squeeze your pec really hard. This can help give you a great pump, especially when incorporated as a superset with another fly or pressing exercise. Finally, the last upper chest exercise that most of you aren't doing is the landmine chest press. Now this exercise can be amazing, but the way you set it up is what will determine if it's effective or not. Most people will load the barbell up on the ground, and the problem with that is in order to lift the weight off the ground, you'll really have to rely on your biceps, which will require you to use a much lighter weight than you actually could push with your chest, shoulders, and triceps. So to avoid this, you'll wanna start with the barbell already elevated off the ground by propping one end up on top of a platform or some sturdy bench. Then you're gonna kneel down and grab the bar with your hands clasped around it in a prayer position. You'll wanna be leaning slightly forward towards the barbell with the bar under your chin. And you'll wanna stick your chest out while keeping your shoulder blades retracted and tight together. Then press the bar up until your arms are fully extended and return back under your chin and repeat for reps. Again, this is one of those exercises that is highly dependent on the isometric contraction to be effective. So while doing this exercise, you'll really wanna concentrate on squeezing your hands together to incorporate more of that isometric horizontal adduction contraction. So those are the seven best upper chest exercises that you're probably not doing. Of course, remember that the more common upper chest exercises like incline bench press and incline dumbbell press and even regular bench press should not be ignored. These exercises allow you to load a lot of weight onto your chest, helping you get stronger at all your pressing movements. And studies have shown that there's a direct link between the size of your chest and the amount of weight that you can bench. 
the more weight you can lift on the bench press, the bigger your chest will typically be. So definitely make sure that you're doing those more common exercises like bench press and incline press. And then you can also throw in some of these less common exercises for a unique stimulus that'll help you grow. In fact, challenging your muscles in new unique ways and hitting them from different angles are two of the most effective things that you can do to force your muscles to grow. That about wraps it up, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon. Also, to maximize the results that you get from the time you spend breaking down your chest at the gym, you'll need to make sure that you're eating the right muscle building foods in the right amounts. All too often people will work out without focusing on nutrition or they'll just eat as much as they can and both of these routes will lead to subpar results. So if you're looking for a done for you approach that'll help you pack on muscle on your chest, back and shoulders fast, you should check out my lean bulking program. It includes a step-by-step -step lean bulking diet plan so you can build muscle without getting fatter as well as a full 12 week workout plan that can be done in the gym or at home with no equipment. Both are designed to get you to grow regardless of how much of a hard gainer you might think you are. And there will always be a coach there to help guide you through the entire process. Also, if you're looking to burn fat, then you should try our six week challenge. Not only will you get a meal plan that'll be based around your preferences, whether that be intermittent fasting, carb cycling, one meal a day, keto or vegan, but you'll also experience some of the fastest fat loss that's actually sustainable long term. Between the three gyms that we have in New Jersey and our online training, we've put thousands of people through these programs and my clients that follow the plan are losing at least 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six short weeks. To learn more, you can click the link below or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.